So hello, everybody. Uh, once again, it's my pleasure to uh, give you an update on the Spring Framework Roadmap. Um, but first of all, since I've been backstage, I really need to check. Any Java developers in the room? Uh, Spring developers, maybe? Just possibly? <laughs> all right. You're in the right place, and uh, I guess I am too. Uh, all right. So um, I've actually been doing this for, this for more than a decade. Uh, about 13 years, uh, I'm already in uh, the business of, uh, and of evolving the Spring Framework uh, along with the times. And uh, uh, you've seen quite a bit of it, uh, I suppose, of the evolution right, from the early days, uh, 1.x to 2.0, 2.5, 3.0. Um, we, we, we had our pace. We had our rhythm. Uh, but in recent years, we changed gears a little. With Spring Framework 4.0, we actually chose to um, just shorten our iterations. We do a major feature release called .1, .2, .3, right, every nine to 10 months these days. So um, at the moment, we're in actually a, a pretty fine, yeah, pretty fine state uh, with uh, the 4.x line. We arrived at Spring Framework 4.3 just the other day. So in, in back in June, we released 4.3 GA. We're at 4.3.2 right now. The uh, 4.3 line is actually the last planned 4.x feature release. So it's kind of wrapping up our Spring Framework 4 story. Um, we chose to do 4.3 as kind of an uh, intermediate release, really. Um, we, we, we considered just wrapping up at 4.2. Uh, but then we figured, well, there's actually quite a lot of low-hanging fruit. We can do quite, quite, quite a few nice refinements, both in the core container, both in the, in, in the very dependency injection model, and also in uh, Spring MVC, in the web layer. And with 4.3, we are kind of giving you an intermediate release that's actually a pretty major feature release, almost a little bit of uh, an early backport from 5.0, you could say. We do things in 4.3 that in other projects probably would only be done in a 5.0. So uh, many, many refinements in the core container, uh, quite a few refinements in the web space, but the same system requirements. Spring Framework 4.3 is still compatible with JDK 6, 7, and 8, uh, and runs on any server 2.5 plus container, so even back to Tomcat 6 or WebSphere 7. Um, so it actually embraces almost all of the infrastructure that you could possibly deploy a Spring-based application on today still. So that's for the three. It's available to you right now. We released Spring Boot 1.4 just a few days ago based on Spring Framework for the three. So if you want to use it in its full glory, I highly recommend checking out Spring Boot 1.4 along with it. Next up. And that's not a secret, because we've been talking about it for quite a while, is Spring Framework 5.0. Uh, the plan really matured quite a bit in the meantime. Uh, we had originally this motivation of a 4.3 and 5.0. The timing wasn't uh, entirely clear up front. In the meantime, we have 4.3 out. So we have a very concrete plan for 5.0. We even have a 5.0 milestone 1 out, along with uh, 4.3.2. So if you want to get an early uh, impression of what Spring Framework 5.0 is going to be like, check out 5.0 M1, released uh, just a week ago. And uh, it's my pleasure to um, at least forecast that we aim for a release candidate in December this year still. These are not hard dates, but as you know from previous iterations, we do tend to make them somewhat closely. So uh, uh, an RC1 in December is the target. And um, that would lead to a GA timeframe in Q1 next year, February, March timeframe next year. So we actually have a reasonably uh, fast-paced iteration um, after folder three here. The most important, the most important uh, fundamental change in Spring Framework 5 is raising the baseline. This is JDK 8 plus now. I hope nobody minds. I hope you all actually appreciate that finally the framework itself in every little corner, in every little API, will be Java 8 based and make the best possible use of uh, a few of the Java 8 features that we could not quite use before. I'm sure you're aware that Spring Framework 4.x, 4.3 uh, actually has a really great Java 8 story. 
We adapt to everything you could possibly want to do in your code at runtime. We reflectively detect your use of Java 8 artifacts, and we automatically support it at runtime. Spring Framework 4.3 feels like a Java 8-based framework from an application development perspective. However, internally, it is JDK 6-based with optional Java 8 code. So I admit, this JDK 8 plus change is primarily for us. We really look forward to updating the code base to JDK 8 plus. But it's also for you, not just for some API fine tuning. It's also for contributions, for running the tests. If you want to send a pull request our way, this is JDK 8 plus now on master. Uh, I'm sure you're going to appreciate that from a contributor's perspective as well. Um, the baseline upgrade goes a little bit further. This is basically a Java E7 baseline. So a couple of the feature themes. We, uh, we do, once again, focus on a core container overhaul. Uh, we, we use the opportunity here to really go Java 8 plus uh, in every corner, as mentioned, but in particular to use uh, Java 8 enabled APIs. In some of our interfaces, um, we uh, were restricted in what we could do before. We couldn't use Java util function types. You're going to see additional methods, convenience methods, new variants showing up, making use of those new Java 8 types. At the same time, we focus on JDK 9. JDK 9 is not out yet. The uh, uh, JDK 9 roadmap is actually a little up in the air at the moment. I'll return to that at the very end. Um, but uh, it's my pleasure to claim that even with Spring Framework 5.0 and 1, we actually run perfectly fine on the latest JDK 9. JDK 9 publishes a milestone or a snapshot every week. Um, the entire framework, including its build and its tests, runs just fine on JDK 9. So if you want to make it work, basically grab Spring Framework 5.0M1 uh, or, or just a snapshot from master, upgrade Gradle to 3.0M2, run it on JDK 9, and you, you're going to see it pass. So we are in a pretty fine shape with JDK 9 in class path mode. JDK 9 brings a new concept called the module path onto our plate. This is basically Jigsaw, the module system, uh, driven by module path. We are not quite there yet with the module path. This is right next for M2, M3. We're going to explore the use of Spring Framework 5 in a Java 9 module path arrangement. Um, there are no showstoppers or up known, is uh, uh, known issues up front, really. Uh, but this is yet a path to be fully explored. All right, in a uh, uh, more spring-style feature mindset, um, not, just up, uh, not just baseline driven, we're going to focus on startup performance. The core container really does a lot of work when just bootstrapping your application. Um, to some degree, this is already quite optimized. Uh, however, at the moment, we just do the best possible job given the information that we have at runtime. And the information often just is a jar file, basically a class path. We need to find out what you gave us, what the application gives us, and what to do with it. So in 5.0, we're going to explore the use of additional facilities. What if, a, what if the build process would create a specifically crafted index for us that allows us to find out about specific annotated components up front without having to fully scan the class path? What about concurrent bootstrapping? What if certain startup processes in environments that allow us to use additional bootstrap threads would just run concurrently? Because historically, Spring starts up in a single bootstrap thread. That's the only thing you can do in a standard uh, war-style servlet environment. And we're going to focus on flexible mechanisms to retrieve beans from the container programmatically. And also, we're going to explore further variants of registering beans with the container. We already took this pretty far. Uh, it might not be as well known, but there are many facilities for programmatic registration of beans in the core container. We're exploring new variants using Java Util function suppliers, uh, Lambda-friendly ways of configuring a small tailored Spring application context for microservice environments. There are a few ideas that we're trying to bring together here at this level. In the web space, we uh, have kind of ongoing themes with us. Uh, efficient web interaction, optimizing the hotspot code paths in Spring MVC is an ongoing theme. We've been, uh, spent a lot of work on this already in the 4.x line. 
We are already uh, in early stages of HTTP2 support as far as we can. If you're using Spring Framework 403 and you choose to use Tomcat 8.5 or JD 9.3 or Undertow 1.3, an HTTP2 enabled server container, you can already get a, quid, a pretty nice HTTP2 story. In um, Spring Framework 5.0, we're going to uh, explore this further and make it more first class. HTTP2 as kind of the reference um, uh, web architecture. Uh, the reference web protocol underneath, both on the server and on the client side. Um, and we'd like to expose some facilities to control new HTTP2 mechanisms, like uh, uh, programmatic pushes, uh, stream priorities, those kinds of facilities in a first-class way. But even more importantly, and with much more impact, we are going to fully deliver a reactive streams-based web story. Uh, reactive streams-based at controllers uh, reactive streams based uh, HTTP handlers at the programmatic level. This is the, uh, certainly the most important, the, the major feature theme in Spring Framework 5.0. And this is what we're going to focus on right after my, my little roadmap interlude here. You're going to hear much more about this here on stage and during the day here at the show. Beyond uh, the uh, I.O. facilities underneath, uh, we're also going to focus on the endpoint style. Uh, traditionally, in recent years at least, uh, Spring Web Controllers are annotated classes, add controller classes with annotated handler methods, reflectively uh, resolved signatures. We are exploring different styles of specifying HTTP, HTTP handlers. Again, Java 8 based in a more Lambda friendly, method reference friendly way. We already got sweet prototypes uh, around. We are exploring where to take them. This is an ongoing, this is ongoing R and D work, uh, but it looks pretty, pretty fine for delivery in Spring Framework 5 that those still would go together, uh, in particular with our reactive story, very, very nicely. So this is the uh, the web theme. Let me finish with a few words on JDK 9 because I've been. I've been mentioning JDK 9 as a major theme before uh, when talking about Spring 5. So Spring Framework 5.0 is intentionally close to the JDK 9 schedule, to the original JDK 9 schedule. Um, originally, JDK 9 was supposed to be released in September 2016. Well, then, then they chose to move to March 2017. We kind of fit in in between. Now. The uh, feature freeze, the feature deadline, feature freeze deadline in JDK 9 has already passed by almost three months. Uh, there's no revision of the schedule yet, uh, but we're not making any bets that JDK 9 actually ships in, in March 2017. It's highly unlikely at this point. So our solution to this alignment problem is that we're going to ship Spring Framework 5 to independently. We're going to ship it when it's ready, when the reactive story, the core container overhaul, the Java 8, um, uh, foundation in, in the code base when all of that is ready. That's when it's going to ship. If that's ahead of JDK 9 and it looks like it will be, uh, then that's OK. We're going to deliver full early compatibility with the current JDK 9 builds available at that time. So you're going to be able to use it. And uh, there's good enough, there's, there's really good stuff in JDK 9. And just using um, Spring on JDK 9 will be a compelling combination. There are, in particular, worthwhile runtime enhancements. So even if you don't care about Jigsaw, or if Jigsaw is not going to deliver a smooth enough story for our purposes in Springland and with Spring Boot in particular, even then, JDK 9 is going to be a worthwhile upgrade. Don't uh, 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 basically take my word for it. It's, we're going to have a smooth combination here. Um, but let's not make any bets on when. So uh, JDK 9, uh, the uh, random enhancement, garbage collection enhancements, compact strings, the uh, HTTP 2 stack out of the box, all of that is important. We're going to embrace it as far as possible um, with 5.0 already. The uh, current plan has an assumption baked in that the uh, JDK 9 GA story is only going to happen with Spring Framework 5.1 towards the end of next year. because. There's always a next version coming up. We have Spring Framework 5.0 towards uh, like February, March next year. Spring Framework 5.1 towards the end of next year. Another nine-month iteration. 